Hello, everyone. Welcome back, folks, to uh, the Tax Advisory and Business Coach Says Podcast. I'm Liz Soria, your host. And today we have an expert episode, which I'm really excited about. And our special guest is by the name of Hope Alcacer. And our topic is going to be about female entrepreneurship, which I really like that topic as a female myself. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a brief introduction of Hope, that way the audience know who you are, Hope, and welcome, by the way, to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. Well, Hope Alcacer is a woman empowerment advocate and a self-published author. She owns the media and plus PR firm, Wonder Woman Media, I love that name, of which she relaunched the past year. Her second book, 30 Things Before 30, was released this spring in the month of March, and serves as a self-help book for millennials. Now, her first book, Where Hope Lies, was released last year on the International Women's Day. Well, you know, Hope, welcome so much, you know, to our show. Uh, you know, I'm glad that you're here with us. And, you know, one of the things I love doing is bringing all kind of diversity of people background and experience and skills that they have, because I believe we all learn from each other. And, uh, uh, you know, I like to just give you, you know, ask you brief questions just to get to know a little bit. And if you want to add anything to your intro, please, by all means, you can do that right now. I know you covered it all. You I did. did. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot more than just that. <laughs> that was very brief, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, definitely. So what are the, some of the change, you know, challenges being as a self-published author? Because I, you know, one of the things, by the way, I do kind of add a little of my own personal story when I'm doing the interview with everyone else. And I have published my own book too. And I find cool. it to be a little bit, yeah, uh, kind of bumpy, you know, especially on your first experience, like anything else that we do the first time right. where, you know, I feel like I, wish that I have had someone or a better guidance in how to do things. So uh, again, what, what has it been your, your, your challenges to self-publish your own books? I mean, can, can you share that with us, please? Absolutely. So, you know, when people hear that you self-publish a book, they think it's, it's super awesome and you have full control. And that's true. You do have full control of, of the book, the publishing, you know, what the cover looks like and everything, what they don't realize is two different things. One is that you have to fiscally back the entire project yourself. You don't have a publisher to on that hand. You don't have a literary, literary agent. You don't have anything like that. So it is full, you know, solely yourself, which is great because again, you get to decide everything, um, but fiscally it can be very draining. And so, and then the set, you know, the second part is once it's out, you can't just be like, I released a book. I'll let my publicist handle it from there. You are, you are doing everything. You're doing the promotions, you're doing the events, you're doing, you're building the momentum and getting this audience awareness. Um, I'm in marketing and, and publicity. So that was a little bit easier for me. I already had the plan. I was ready to go, but you are everything. You are the accountant. You are the event coordinator. You are the editor. Um, so it, it is a lot. Um, but right now on Amazon, I believe the number is like 25% of the best sellers are actually self-published. So right? it's not like it's, yeah. So it's, it's definitely up and coming. It's definitely acceptable. Um, you just have to work a little harder to make your mark and obviously to have that funds prepared. My first book, I did not have the funds ready to go. And so I was a little, it's like, Oh, I'll just, you know, have it edited and we'll be good to go. Well, no, you know, you need a publicity budget, you need a social media campaign budget, you need the travel budget to be able to go promote the book. Um, and then each round you edit, it obviously costs money. So this second time around, I was more prepared, um, thankfully, and it was a smoother process. Very interesting. And, and I think, like I said, I kind of experiment the same, you know, uh, faces that you went through, because even if you have, you know, I had someone who was helping me out obviously doing right. the design of the cover you know of the book and also doing some of the the, the pr and social media but I, I also found that uh out of the many mistakes that that i made with you know publishing my first book and this was way back in i think it was early 2015 and just right. last year i decided to revise and edit the book uh because as you probably know in the tax law i mean everything in accounting a lot of things are changing oh, sure. yeah it's yeah kind of crazy because it's like by the time you think you're memorizing something, something else is changing. And it's like, right. well, you know, you can never really catch up 100% with the changes, but we do the best we can, right? But my, my question to you is, how important it is 
the probably pre-launch of the book itself uh, to 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 the you know to the audience to the public because I think that's a, that's a very crucial point that I missed uh, because I thought I was so concentrating and just trying to you know have all the content and everything else into into place and having the proofreading you know and and right. having the artwork but how important and what is the process to that if you don't mind sharing with us in regards to the time frame and what will be your tips to share with us in regards to what was the best strategies that you implemented that has worked, especially now on your second book, because you want right. to stick around. So please do that for us. Right. Come on, Sharon. Well, I was blessed because the first book, it was based off of a blog I had kept four years prior. So the first book was blog entries compiled into a book. So I had thousands of people knowing that I was creating a book and they could not wait for it to come out. So when that, it was building up that like little teasers, Right. Um, gosh, social media is, I know you hear it time and time again, but I can't say it enough. Social media is so important for promoting anything. You have to whet your audience's appetite. Um, you have to pull them in and you have to be consistent. Um, I have fellow authors who will drop a little, you know, note about how it's coming out and then they'll wait another couple of months and the audience forgets. Like you have to kind of be in their face about it. Um, without being too annoying. And so what I did was like a countdown, a 30 day countdown. And I would do a blurb from the book each day leading to the month. Um, obviously, even in a day of social media, you need to still have your traditional press release and distribute it to people that, you know, would find it interesting and maybe want to do a story on you. Um, and then also just, you know, tug at your audience's heartstrings, even for a book like your for you know, your industry, there's still a way to find that emotional connection with your audience. And once you find that, you'll be able to kind of... Yeah, sorry, that, that's called money. Yeah, hitting your pocket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for my industry, anything that you tell people, it's going to hurt your pocket, then, then you get their attention. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> By kind of looping them in like that. So that's good. So your suggestion is uh, at least 30 days before the actual launch of the book, you need to start creating all this fuss, you know, and buzz going around in media. Oh, I would, I would have it created well before the 30 days. I, I had my content created months before ready to go, but I would begin the rollout, the countdown, getting everyone excited, you know, at the very least 30 days. It's fun to have that month, that month countdown and then your friends or family are sick of you promoting your book, but it works to, to ha you know, have that build up. Um, and then I have an editorial calendar. Even now I have the book is out, but I have events until December for the book. And so we have notated, okay, you know, this month we're going to do this, this month we're going to do that. Um, and it helps you stay a lot organized, you know, a lot more organized when it's all laid out versus, okay, it's Sunday. What are we going to post tomorrow? So, I've, you know, social media has been huge in promoting both books. And in, 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 in your experience, which platforms have been the best? <laughs> See, I'm digging in now, right? <laughs> I'm trying to get the best out of you. Um, Absolutely. You know, if, how if do you think of books was the best one? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, if you're, a couple years ago, two, three years ago, I would have told you Facebook um, because that was where everyone was going for their news and, and catching up with their friends. And now with everything changing, the algorithm changing, needing more money to even have your post be seen by just a general audience. Um, I would, you know, say Instagram is absolutely huge. That's where most of my book sales come from on both books. Actually, when I trace it, it's always through an Instagram link that links to Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, and I love Instagram because you can have the text. You can pull again, that emotional heartstring with your audience with your words, but then you also have an image or a video that constantly, you know, is, is on their feed. And then also using Insta stories to kind of give them, you know, an inside look of like, Hey, this is before we go on set for an interview, or this is the behind the scenes look at my book trailer. And, and it, and it connects with the audience in a way that they're like, Oh, I want to stay, you know, I want to follow her. And then I want to purchase her book and, you know, learn more about her. So it's Instagram has been absolutely huge um, for both books, both campaigns. And then, you know, anything I do related to marketing and PR. Wow, that's a great tip. You know, I, I'm actually, I don't even have an account with Instagram, by the way. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm that honest. What can I tell you? Uh, you know, I, I started way back my social media, like, oh my goodness, 2010. I kind of feel right. old here. Um, so yeah. it, it wasn't really until like 2012, maybe around, around that time when I started really yeah. becoming a little more active. Um, and now in this days, yeah, I have a lot of what they call curate uh, content, which automatically just updates my account 
Plus, we also, you know, add things like the videos right. and the podcast to bring more value to, to, to everyone who's connected with us. But no, I haven't tried Instagram. So that, that's definitely a, a good point uh, for some of us like me that we haven't, you know, or others out there who haven't even bothered to open an account. So you feel there's more buzz online. What about, isn't Instagram connected with Facebook, correct me here, or, or, or I'm wrong? It is. No, it is. It was purchased, it was purchased by Facebook. Um, so what's great to that effect is you can cross the audiences. So if I, if you have a business page and I want to share something in my story on Instagram, it goes to my 5,000 Facebook friends as well, or my professional page as well. Um, so then I don't have to worry about content, but it has been so hard to generate a buzz on Facebook again, unless you have those ad dollars. Um, and I, you know, consult for a living with social media and all that, you know, full time. And I, I tell my clients, unless you have thousands of dollars to pour into ads yeah. on Facebook, you're not going to be seen by your target audience. It, it takes a lot. So Instagram kind of takes away that hassle and that budgetary concern. Um, and again, highly recommended. Another thing that people forget is if you're going to have an Instagram account and you want to be promoted, don't forget to interact with your followers. Um, don't just slap something up on your feed and then go away in you know, interact with people following you like, like photos, and then you will be pushed higher to your feed as well, or, you know, their feed if you interact more. So definitely engagement. That's a big Absolutely. plus. Absolutely. You have to have engagement. So even though you might have good graphics or what they call it, infographics? Is that what they call them? Is that what they do in this? Info, yeah, infographic. Well, infographic is when you have the image and then the text leading up. So those are used, you know, a lot of times with blogs, but just an Insta post is usually what it's called or Insta story is when it's the live story. Um, so yeah, I would, I would definitely tap into that after, after we're done here, I would, I would get yourself an Instagram account and uh, see what you can do with it. <laughs> You'd be my first connection. There you go. <laughs> you can follow me. I'd be, I'd be sending you an invitation. Hey, hope you want to connect with me. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> you, you know what? It's funny. I, and, and I really have a good laugh on this because I, I, you know, I was brought up, they told me this like over two years ago and I'm like, why you don't have an Instagram account? I said, well, I mean, between Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn, right. which is the main platform that we use right. at least, you know, in our, you know, professional industry. Uh, but again, I mean, this is great to know because if it happens to be, I need to release another book and it's working for you or anybody who's listening to this, you know, podcast or watching us through the YouTube, because now we're recording this also in video format. Um, I think it's important for them to know, and obviously you have experience. So if they're in the process of thinking about, you know, self-publishing, you know, they might want to get a little support from someone like you who has been through that kind of experience, right? I'm very happy. You yeah. can yeah. help them out with, I mean, do you actually not only uh, help your clients with the, um, the promotion, do you, do you have designers creating the infographics too? Um, um, hope about that. I do, I do everything. I have, I have a marketing assistant, but I will curate the posts. I always take a look at their social medias and I see what's lacking, what are they strong in, what can be improved. And then I go ahead and create a strategy. I create the content for your strategy. And then I go ahead and execute it or I can teach you how to execute it so you don't feel you know, kind of paralyzed that I have to, I have to just work with me. I want my clients to feel empowered to do their own social media or their own marketing and publicity if they so desire. Um, but I'm more than happy to work with clients to actually do it for them. Cause a lot of business owners are like, I am so busy with my business. I don't have time to post consistently, which is the biggest key is to post consistently. So I, I do that for several clients in a variety of industries. Wow, that's very interesting. So at least the audience who, who are, again, they're listening uh, or they're watching this video, I mean, uh, if you're in the, in the process of thinking about, you know, publishing a book or something, uh, I mean, I would strongly recommend that really uh, the, the more support you can get and, and <laughs> better help, uh, right. it's going to be a more successful launch than you doing it on your own because it can be difficult. Um, and again, you give us a really good uh, tips on Amazon, which is worth having it, you know, uh, uh, available, right? Uh, Barnes and Nobles, I mean, how does that work with Barnes and Nobles? Um, I mean, do you have to have a special account with them? Uh, how does that work? Because I, I never had my book. Uh, <laughs> publish them so is, is that something you really recommend is it amazon the, like the big the big boy out there where you want to publish it first there and then maybe wait a couple of weeks how, how did you what was your strategy behind that if you don't mind hope so there's two ways you can go about it i mean obviously amazon is the king right now amazon is reigning right 
However, it absolutely helps as an author to be able to say my book is at Barnes and Noble. You know, it's great for me to, my grandma like is always referencing people to go to Barnes and Noble, you can pick it up. So there's something to be said for that brand as well, right? Sure. So you can do it one of two ways. If you publish through Create Space, which is Amazon's publishing platform, um, they'll have the book on Amazon for the first, I believe, four to six weeks. From six to eight weeks begins the uh, time of which it's pushed through to Barnes and Noble and other local retailers. So my first book, I did that. I didn't have to worry about it being in Barnes and Noble, but I had to, I had to wait six to eight weeks for people to see it there. The second time around, I ended up just opting to do Amazon and Barnes and Noble on the same day. So I published through Barnes and Noble. It's called Nook Press, N-O-O-K, and then Press, like their tablet. Um, and then I can publish it independently on their platform as well. So that, and then you could order through Barnes and Noble, you can order um, hardcover or paperback, whereas just on Amazon, you can only do paperback. And that's something a lot of people, when they publish a book, they want it on paperback. They want to kind of have that. I think it's just kind of like a rite of passage as an author to have that. So do you um, have a copy so, of your book that you can share in the video? You don't have it? I don't have it today. I'm sorry. I just How is that? I know. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I apologize. You did, but you can find out more about my book. Um, it's 30. So the number 30, 30 TB, um, and then the number 30. So 30 TB30.com or just 30 things before 30.com. But that's a mouthful. So I like to give that um Okay. Well, let me ask you something real quick because it definitely, uh, I think that again, as females, um, we, we have a little bit more of a challenge and I want to, I want to believe that, you know, we have come a long, long way, <laughs> you know, from 40, yeah. 50 years ago. And I think that for us, it's a little bit, I can say easier or probably a little more smooth for us to be able to, um, you know, have better exposure and be accepted. Um, but at the same time, we need to be realistic and this is no offense to any man who's listening or watching this video, but right, right. we still have some obstacles that, that we, Absolutely. you know, on the process of working and some of them might not understand that because as a man, you don't, you don't have these issues, but as a female, we do, and we're still working on it guys. Absolutely. So, um, you know, and, 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 and I really have my highest respect to men who support very much, you know, women's uh, businesses, because I think deep inside they have a mother they have a sister they have a female somebody that represents right. their family and they have heard these kind of things and I think that's why they become a little more supportive to the female gender um, but one of the things I wanted to ask you just to kind of bring empowerment uh, you know to, 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 to the woman out there is you know what were you know your uh, what would you really recommend women when it comes to getting into the journey of entrepreneurship as a female. I mean, what kind of guidance will you give them to how to start? And I think especially how to not give up because sometimes yeah, it's hard. Virtually we want the easy exit out and if things don't work out too fast, uh, as females, we're a little more emotional in that cycle. Yeah. So if we see something's not coming out the way we plan and, you know, our logical minds are telling us, no, this is not the way it should be. I'm going to give up. Um, so right. what, what was your journey? What can you, you know, what were your challenges and what would you recommend for, for you know, again, a woman out there who are planning to start the businesses and, and trying to deal with the obstacles that unfortunately this still exists for us? Absolutely. Well, not to sound negative, but most businesses, if they're going to fail, they'll fail within the first three years. And I don't say that to bring a, you know, a cloudy storm on this interview, but I say that because if that's a statistic, that means that you need to allow yourself at least those three years to just see how it plays out. Give yourself that time, allow yourself to make mistakes, allow yourself to have failures because they're just going to be stepping stones and building blocks for the success ahead. So that'd be my first advice is it may seem bleak for the first couple of years. Um, I've been an independent contractor for almost eight years now and, you know, running my own business for that long. Thank you. Thank you. And then there's been so many challenges. There's been times where I jump back into a full-time job because I'm so afraid of the unknown. And then I realize I was not meant for that. Um, and so my, my encouragement is to don't let the first couple of years to depict how you're going to succeed. Um, just wait it out. It's going to be, it's like a marriage. I'm not married, but I know for my mother, it's like, it's that, I've been told it's that up and down, it's that valley. And then you have that high point. And so just ride it out. Like, like you would, you know, a relationship or a marriage, 
my biggest piece of advice is to find a mentor. Um, and I've had a couple of strong, amazing women in my life who there's always going to be someone better than you, right? There's always going to be someone more successful. And so you find that person that's made it and you don't have to, you know, be hounding them all the time. You're like, what do you do? What do you do? But have that person in your corner that you can say, this is my struggle. Can you help me? And, you know, it can just be sitting down for a half hour with a cup of coffee and just getting an inspiration, or maybe they're available via email. Um, so I've always had mentors throughout each stage in my life. Even at this stage, I have someone above and better and beyond that kind of guides me. And um, the second piece is because more and more women are starting their own businesses, which more power to them. It's incredible. It's incredible yes. watching all these businesses and these women online and, and having these, you know, these influencers and they're just killing it. The yeah. only problem or downside of that is now everyone is an influencer. Now everyone is a marketer. Now everyone is, you know, uh, an artist and now everyone is a coach. And so my challenge then is to, so you stand out in this sea of women trying to make it big is to find your it factor. And there is something within you that is different than anyone else, different than any other coach or different than any other publicist or any other social media marketer, different than any other author. Find that and hone in on that. Spend your time and energy harnessing that and making that very defined and definite to your audience so that they know why you stick out. Because there's, like I said, there's there's hundreds of publicists in my in my age group in, in, in New York. What's going to set me aside? You know, what is going to make me stand out that a client is going to say, I want this one? So spend some time journaling, reflecting on what your it factor is going to be. Um, and I think you'll you'll find it to be very successful if you do that. Wow, well, that was a lot, a lot of uh, good suggestions there. <laughs> and I really appreciate it. Uh, and by the way, uh, thumbs up. I'm from New York, okay? So I was, I, I was born in the Big Apple. In there you go. New York there. Uh, so even though I live in Florida, yeah, uh, I, I, I think the majority of people that came from North, I mean, we just running from the cold weather, right? Uh, that was the main reason why we hit down here to, to South Florida. But um, oh, uh, definitely New York will always be at a special you know, heart right Please right my heart forever and ever amen uh you know and and every time i have the opportunity to go and visit it's like i feel that's my hometown i mean Absolutely. It is. Yeah. Uh, but you know besides that i think that another thing is i believe that it seems like for the millennial woman it's becoming a little bit easier than for my generation because i'm a little older than you just by like two years. No, just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, and I have that dry sensor humor, by the way. So the thing is, um, do you think that it's getting easier really right now for, for, for females or is it like there's too much going on out there and, and there's no direction and maybe perhaps you need a little more help in, in, in your generation to kind of guide, you know, the woman to even a more successful path, you know? That's a, no, that's a great way of, that's a great question and a great reflection. Um, I think we are in a time that if you're going to succeed, it's now. I mean, we live in a day and age where women are the front runners right now, not to give any less attention to the males. We need you guys, but Absolutely, this is, time, no doubt. We need you guys. but we are in a, we are in a time where if our voices are going to be heard, it's going to be now. Um, it is in front and center, which is beautiful. It's been a wonderful thing to see all these women come forward and, and know that they can do things and, and be good at them. I do agree with you though, because now so much power is being given to us. A lot of these millennial women are like, now what? Like, what do I do? You know, I have the world. What do I do? What do I run with? Um, and right. so just stay focused uh, would be my advice. You know, you're meant to do one thing. It doesn't mean you can't add on different things, but harness, like I said, that it factor, what you really want to do and hone in on that and make it your own. Because otherwise you're right. We have just you know, car blanche right now to, to go ahead and explore it and, and try all different things and, and be a boss babe. But um, you do kind of have to stay focused or you can get very overwhelmed and kind of frazzled and like, what, what am I doing? You know? Yeah, I think that again, and you're right, there's a, a, a wide variation of things that now females can do in this new generation. And I think that to me, I mean, this, this is right. I love it, right? Um, and I always give empowerment to, to, to women too. And I tell them, I said, you're not limited. I mean, really, it's up to you where you, where you want to head. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, again, we hear this over and over. 
and it's, uh, you know, you must have passion, right? Yeah, we must have passion, but it's not the only ingredient to become no. successful. It's, it's, it's a combination of different ingredients. The same way as when we cook, we have to add different ingredients to make it taste better. So it's the same Absolutely. thing in our career and or, you know, our, our profession. We need to add certain ingredients to hopefully make it to that success point. And like you said at the beginning, we are going to have some ups and downs. I mean, it is right. for se la vie. It is life itself and it wouldn't be it'd be too so static imagine how boring life will be right Absolutely. so you know we need to have those kind of shake-ups sometimes because if we don't have it then we really can learn from that so right. i think that there's plenty of opportunities out there for, for for the millennial generation and females and you know i feel like it's just like you said coaching it's extremely important um picking the right person that you can connect with Right, because I think that's important. That you must have that kind of connection, um, because again, you want someone that it's going to be able to truly help you in the process as a female right. to to move forward. Because there will be times, and we know that, right? I accept it. This where you know we kind of have our down days and and we, we doubt ourselves because as humans, I mean, we just doubt our our abilities sometimes, right. and it's very sad because it's a what it calls a really an inner critic that we have, and a worst kind of it is who us ourselves. Yes, absolutely. And it's absolutely. very sad, isn't it? Uh, so sometimes we need to be kind of pat, pat ourselves in the back that we're doing a good job. You know, yes, yeah, so, celebrate yourself. Absolutely. You know, so as females, we definitely need to move forward, and uh, it's wonderful to have uh, you know a, a powerful woman like you, and, and you know, in the forces, and try and help our a lot of other women out there, and I'm sure you help many men too. There's no difference with that. So definitely, you think that for um, a company uh, or a service to have self-published books and things like that, it, it's a good way of uh, exposure, you know, for, for for their business of being able to share this, you know, their knowledge. It, 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 that's definitely a big plus, isn't it? Absolutely. If someone's interested in self-publishing, it's a, it's a great way to, you know, say what you need to say, get it on paper, and then have it there for, for years to come. With a social media post, it moves down your feed, right? But with a book or with an ebook, you have it there. It's tangible. Um, my advice, uh, you know, in the author community, I'm a part of several author communities here in New York, and we have the published authors who self-publish, and then we have the authors who were published by a publishing company and there's a little bit of resentment on those that have been published by a publishing company because they're like your book sometimes isn't edited as properly and it doesn't have the highest quality like they took Ooh. years to get accepted by right. a publishing company and we're able to just push out a book um and you know i'll be the first to admit my first book it had terrible editing it was all i can afford i did the lowest budget editing possible even in this book, I read it and it's much better, but I'm like, oh gosh, there's a typo. And so I, I would advise, like, if you're going to put out a book, a self-published book, it is your words and your reputation kind of on the line and make sure you go through the time and energy to find a good editor. Even if it takes longer to produce, it's well worth it versus the bad reviews after or the, hey, it, you know, your, your editing could have been better. It's, it's worth it to just wait. Um, and I, I highly recommend it. You have to be willing to do a project like that 200% before putting out a self-published book. Um, so you make sure you, yeah, make sure you check everything off your list and it's a quality piece of work because that will be with you for as long as your digital fingerprint is, is out on the internet, which is forever. So just a little words of wisdom there. And one last thing before we wrap up here, uh, this, uh, this interview, uh, Hope, do you have your books? I mean, are they just paperback or are they also audio and, and, and what else they have in an ebook? Uh, do you have those? Yeah. Also so available? Both books are available on paperback and ebook. And then 30 things before 30 is being released next week on audible and iTunes and all that. So that's very exciting. My first book was not, um, there was not an audible version. And then in the summer it is coming out because I, you know, it's been over a year and I'm still having people saying, can you please make it, you know, uh, an audible book. So we're going to do that. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about it when I get started, but I guess that that's more of a trend too, is people want to be able to work and cook yes. and work out while listening. Absolutely. And I don't think about that. I think that people want to relax with the book, but absolutely. If, if you can do that with your book, um, make sure you find a great narrator. I found a woman who I listen to her voice and I'm like, oh, I wish I sounded like that. Like it makes me want to read. Whereas I think I sound like a man. So I'm glad that I have someone narrating my books. Um, so funny. yeah, highly recommended. Um, Audible, acx.com is Amazon's audio version That's of funny. their publishing. 
I'm sure you're familiar. Um, highly recommend it. And it doesn't cost anything if you do the royalty option. It's just the 50-50. Uh, royalties are split, which is, I, I didn't know. It was incredible. It's a no-brainer. I agree with oh, you. Oh, absolutely. Because, absolutely. Uh, I was amazed, actually, like I said, it was in, in uh, early 2015 when I released my, my book, um, you know, starting running a small business in the USA because tax laws I only I'm only familiar with within the US. Right. I, I don't do international tax. And uh, and again, you're right. I definitely the first thing I did, I had someone who proofread my book, who edited my book. I mean, it, it, it was a challenge. And this was only an ebook at that time. Right. Oh, All I was wow, doing yeah. because back three years ago, that right, was, right. It was, it was the print going on, right? So anyhow, long right. story short, and then last year I decided to revise it for the changes that have happened. And also I made it into an audio audible. And guess what? Yeah. I started selling more of my book. Oh yeah. yeah, more yeah that's the it's, way to go. And then I also made the hard copy of what they call a hard, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. The, and that started selling too also. So I was amazed that for some reason, uh, ebooks was a big trend back three years ago, but now it have kind of lost value, if I may say. You're and right. now You're people right. are moving to the audio and, and, and trying to use, you know, um, the actually they like the, 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 the hard copy. And yeah. I'm old fashioned in that. I love just going to the pages and underlying highlighting. And I know it's just something that I'm from, you know, like I said, another generation, right? No, 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 no. There's, nothing like, there's nothing like a book in your hands, you know? It? It, feel, it feels right, right? Yeah, absolutely. Good, I'm gonna thumbs up for that. All right, <laughs> hope we, 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 we have a few things that we agree and the rest, that's fine. I mean, yeah, I just kidding. <laughs> hope it's, it's been a great pleasure to have you here on our show, it really is. Thank you for And me. I wish you a lot, a lot of success, and I hope you keep moving forward and empowering a lot of women out there and also helping out a lot of men because this is part of the whole process of marketing. And again, you have a successful PR business and people who can come to you again, what, what is the best in contact information that we can have that where the audience can reach out to you, please help. Sure, so my website is wonderwomanmedia.com. Okay. Uh, or then you can reach out. Any of my socials are my first and last name. So at Hope, H-O-P-E, Elkacer, A-L, C-O-C-E-R. I'm sure it'll be in the notes. You guys can follow there. Um, and then also my email is hello at wonderwomanmedia.com. That's great. So and I, and I love to mentor young women too. If there's any young women listening, I love to just do that. Just It's one of my favorite things to do. Wherever they are in the country, I love to help young women get started with their businesses. Thank you for knowing that. I hope because again, we all have an experience and it doesn't matter how many years you've been to. Remember there's someone else that's newer than you. Right, exactly. Starting exactly. from scratch and you're already into it for a few years. Uh, and I've been to it for a little more than that, but uh, you know, <laughs> so, so we, we all like a circle. Isn't it amazing when we really yeah. want to help people from the bottom of our hearts and give that value? And I think that, uh, you know, a lot of times we're, I like creating these expert episodes because we give so much value to the audience. And I just hope people really utilize the, what they hear and what they're watching because it's important. They can really apply it to, to, to their business, you know, and help them a lot. So again, Hope, it, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you you so much for being with thank us thank you for having me and, and, and yeah absolutely now do you have any blogs or anything that people can come and perhaps just uh you know download any information that you might have on, on your website do you have that available please um yeah if you go to my website you can obviously get in contact with me all the links to my books are there um and then if you go i have a medium account as well the medium blogging platform and mm -hmm. there's different chunks of my new book as well to read on there as well kind of teasers to see if the book's for you excellent oh that's wonderful so you have like the preview yeah. the first chapter i do oh, yeah so. the first seven chapters so if people want to get a, an idea really wow that's a yeah. lot you're, you're very uh you know very nice about that <laughs> but how many chapters into the books by the way hope there's 30 chapters because it's 30 things before 30 and then each chapter is a life lesson so each one is, is sectioned off well, when, once again, congratulations on your Thank two you. books, Thank and I wish you a lot of success as you keep, you know, succeeding in life. And again, folks, it's been an exciting episode with Hope, and uh, remember to like, share, and comment, and subscribe not only to our YouTube channel, but also to SoundCloud, where we host our episodes uh, through our own audios and recordings. Thank you so much, folks, and until next time, it's been a pleasure, and goodbye, Hope. I wish you a lot of success. And we stay in touch, okay? Thank All you. Right, thank you so much. Bye. Bye.